our next video. In this lesson, we're going to talk about making sure that Visual Studio Code is our default editor. And this is specifically for Windows machines. So when you downloaded VS Code, if you did that before you installed Git, when you installed Git on the Windows machine, you would have selected VS Code to be your default editor. If you didn't do that for some reason and you are going to go into the config to make edits, you would likely run into Vim. So if it is set and you type in git config dash dash global dash e and you hit enter, it will open Visual Studio Code. And you will see your current git config file for the local repo that you're on within the machine layer that you're on as well. Um, so this one's not in a repo, so that pulled up the user, basically for the entire user. And so there are three levels of git config. There's a system level, which is, this is for everyone on the entire system. There's a user level, which is under your user profile. So this one is, this user is called developer. And so developer user has a git config. And if I create a local repo, then that local repository would also have a git config in that level if I would like to. They typically don't have one there. You'd have to add it and it will override. So the more specific, the closer the git config file is, the, the more it will override the other. So the system will be overridden by the developer or the user, and then the user would be overrided by a local repository git config. So typically you're doing git config within the local user if you're not in a repo, and that's where it said, oh, let's look for the editor. Unfortunately in this one, if I open this with Visual Studio Code, you can see it's actually blank. There's nothing in this one which means that it must be pulling my editor settings right now from the actual system. And if we look at the actual system and I open this with Visual Studio Code, you will see the actual system file has a lot of stuff in it. It has large file system information. It has the SSL backend stuff that's there. Um, it has the core editor already set to VS Code. So because that's already set, I am actually going to have this takeover and every time I type git config dash dash global dash e as I did up here, you will see the editor pop up. If I take this out and save that git config file and I run the same command, now it goes into Vim. So if you get into Vim, you will see basically what looks like 1970s terminal, which is exactly kind of what it is. It's not exactly easy to get out of. So once you're in your git config inside of Vim, to get out, you just hit escape colon Q. And if it tried to write, you would get an error. So if I had actually inserted into this, it would get an error. If I'm not, so let's say I put something in there and I said escape colon Q, it would say no writes since last change, add the bang to override. So if you see that we're basically not trying to write, we do not want to write any changes right now. So hit escape, colon, Q, bang. So either colon, Q or colon, Q, bang, after hitting escape, will get you out. And either way, it's not making any changes. You can do that either way. Now, I want to add this back in as my default editor. So I could simply just put it back at the system level. And what you see is it's, it's essentially looking for the C program files, Microsoft VS Code, bin, code, and then it adds this dash dash wait. So probably that's the most important thing because if you don't have dash dash wait, when you try to use this, if you don't have dash dash wait, it will not wait for you to confirm your commit messages and things like that. So you wanna make sure that's there. You'll also know if you're on a Windows machine, from any editor, if code is in the path, you can just type code dot and that will open that folder inside of Visual Studio Code. And if you can do that, then you have the ability to actually use the path version of code within your config file. So if you do have, instead of C program files, bin code, dash dash wait, you can literally just type code and save that. And then you'll still get the same result because it says, oh, I know how to launch code, no problem. So it opens up the git config. So all you really need is core.editor and you need code, dash dash wait, However, if for some reason code is not in your path, like on a Mac or a, a Linux machine, for example, you may want to just reference it by its actual location in code. 
and then it knows what to do. So because of all these weird slashes, it's like escape character or something. So it's knowing to, to get out of that. Now this again was done at the system level. I could have easily, just as easily done this at my global level for my user. And since we installed it this way, it's gonna be nice to just leave it there. But if you run commands from the local machine, you can actually put them into your local dev. So if I wanted to put it into my local, my local developer, for some reason it wasn't installed, or if you're getting Vim and you just need to add that setting at any level, if you wanna do it at the user level, here, let me just clear this out. You can do git config dash dash global core dot editor code. Again, you'll want the full path there if you're not on a Windows machine. Wait, and let's add that. And then let's do git config dash dash global dash e. And this should open the local. And now you see the local has core editor equals code dash dash wait. And it's basically overriding the fact that we have the same thing in the system file. So either way, uh, we are good to go on our core editor. So uh, one other note here really quick, I'm doing this before I've set user settings for Git. So if you see your username and email there, that's ex exactly expected. So don't worry that it doesn't look exactly like mine. This one is simply about setting the core editor for code. And I'll do another video shortly where I set my config credentials and you'll see again then my user and name and email will be in my file as well. But that's going to end this video on making sure that Visual Studio Code is our default editor, how we can escape them, and how we can use either a local or a system file to set settings for all users on our machine or just our local users. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.